Next talk is pre-recorded, but we have the questions and answers after that online, so please post your questions for the talk. The talk is about robot framework and commer commercial testing tools integrations. Uh, let's enjoy the talk by Christoph Tribas and Gregor Schmidt. Hello and welcome to the talk about the integration of robot framework and a third party commercial tool called PFTest. My name is Christoph Tribus. I am the host and along with Gregor Schmidt from QFS company, which is responsible for QF test. We have prepared a presentation on this topic. And after that, I would like to show you how the integration works based on my project of regression tests for a Java SWT application. Before we start to the proper um, presentation content, I would like to say a few words about us. So I am test automation engineer in Schenker Technology Center in Warsaw. So I am in Warsaw, I live in Warsaw and I am from Poland. I have about nine years of experience in testing. I started as a manual tester and up until now, I had the opportunity to work uh, on both testing back end, front end, on different automation frameworks, tools, and so on and so on. And my hobbies are hiking, so I like spending time outdoors, uh, music. I like listening to music and playing the guitar and pets, which means that I own uh, three fish tanks and two dogs. The dogs are really great, however, they are really noisy, so my neighbors like them less than I do. And Gregor is the founder of QFS company and the original developer of QF test. He has more than 20 years of experience in test automation and his hobbies are running, bouldering and arts. Why we have decided to use robot framework in the first place? Well, it's becoming a standard in Schenker TSC. So more and more people in different projects start to use it. The syntax is easy and understandable and it utilizes human readable keywords. And apart from that, we can incorporate the Gherkin syntax into robot framework. So it, thanks to that, it becomes like more understandable for non-technical, more business-wise people. Um, it is possible to integrate with uh, different tools uh, in order to create robot, uh, robust and flexible automation solutions. Uh, so, like this uh, QFTS application is one example for it, of, of it. It is free to use without licensing costs, so it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it's pretty open and extendable uh, by libraries implemented with different uh, programming languages, for example, Python or Java. So, uh, if some keywords, if some key built-in keywords um, don't satisfy you, you can also implement your own using mentioned programming languages, and it has a vast ecosystem around it, including libraries and tools that are developed as separate projects. So, for example, apart from built-in libraries, you can also uh, use, let's say, external libraries. For example, I use the ScreenCap library for recording uh, videos of failed tests. Uh, I also use HTTP request library, uh, yeah, for sending HTTP REST requests. And I also use the fake library for uh, for generating random data. And it's, yeah, I like this library. This is an interesting one. What were the challenges we've met when we tried to automate an SWT application? Um, well, first of all, this was a unique application with lots of customized classes. So in our application, apart from generic Eclipse classes, there are some custom Schenker classes, which make standardizing components more troubling and finding the right selector for it even harder. Apart from that, uh, the complex application structure and the application performance, which means that there was a lot of nesting and there is a lot of nesting of components inside other components and also the components hierarchy tree can be really complicated. Uh, some hard to locate uh, components, so for example, no, no names, IDs or labels, which means that though 
uh, some buttons, text field, combo boxes, etc. usually have unique IDs. There's still a large number of elements that doesn't have a unique selector. For example, we had problems with tables, um, some, let's say, uh, panel sections or panels in general, and different application versions for multiple environments. So this is not a direct problem uh, with our SWT app. However, numerous versions and environments also require more complex project, which can be also challenging. And I'm talking about, for example, different users, uh, user data and different URLs. And multiple environments also require different data sets. So creating data was also another issue we had to solve. Though we were focusing on robot framework, we also wanted to check other frameworks and tech stacks for automating a Java SWT application. Here are the problems that we have encountered during the investigation of potential testing tools. So in some cases, we were unable to even launch or steer the application in the first place. Apart from that, some libraries were slow in terms of performance. Um, also, the unstable test when using XPass, so sometimes recorded or manually created XPass worked and sometimes they didn't work and the inter interaction with the component was not successful. Um, apart from that, there were a lack in, function lacks in functionalities, so we were unable to interact with some components. Um, there was also a problem with no technical knowledge in the team which means that for some frameworks, additional knowledge of a different programming language was required, and it would take extra time for other team members to learn the required language or master writing tests in, in some other framework. Um, no possibility to run in a Docker container, this is understandable, and no flexibility in terms of text stack change, which means that if in the future, the functionality of our service would extend to a web application, then we would have problems with using a framework called tool designed for testing a specific desktop app. So after our investigation, we have decided that we would like to use uh, the QF test. And maybe I would like to say a couple of words of introduction to this tool. This is a cross-platform software tool for the GUI test automation of Java UI testing, for example, Java Swing, SWT Eclipse, or Java FX, web UI testing, so both static and dynamic HTML components, uh, Windows UI testing, for instance, Win32.net, Windows apps, or C++, PDF documents, which is an interesting feature, which I didn't experience before uh, in other tools um, and Android applications, uh, which means testing of all popular Android versions starting from Android 7 on real devices and on the Google emulator. And in QF test 5.4, Android testing support is included in a preview version. So we use QF test as a proxy between robot framework project and our application under test. And the, that's a basic part of um, our test from the QF test point of view is the QF test test suite, which includes low level keywords for performing basic actions in star applications, which is our application under test. And it's also worth to mention that by this time, uh, QF test 6.0 should be available with robot framework, uh, with, and with smart IDs official um, fe preview feature. I will talk about smart IDs uh, after uh, the presentation because this is also an important part of the whole integration. So how does the integration work? We have three stages, let's say, of the integration of the whole test flow, I would say. So the first one is the robot framework test project with repaired test cases written in robot framework. And the second one are the Python scripts, also in the test project, which communicate uh, with the QF test, test suite through JPipe. And the QF test, test suite is um, the last stage. So we execute the prepared robot framework test cases from the robot framework test project. And then it communicates uh, through the Python scripts 
and dynamically uh, get the available keywords from the QF test test suite and they map the keywords used in robot framework with corresponding procedures in QF test test suite. And in the QF test test suite, the procedures are run against the application on the test. And after the test is complete, uh, the execution results are gathered and the reports are sent back to robot framework. And so, so after that, in the generated robot framework reports, uh, we can check the logs and the messages, the errors. So the whole like reports from both robot framework perspective and also the QF test perspective. And for people who didn't have the opportunity or contact with JPipe, this is a Python module uh, that provides full access to Java from within Python. And it allows Python to, for instance, use specific Java libraries, explore and visualize Java structures, uh, or develop and test uh, the Java libraries. Okay, so let's jump into the project. So before I talk about the Python scripts, I would like to show how it's even done and how it's connected from, say, the, the resource perspective or the robot framework perspective. So first we need to do a library import of the QF test daemon. And this is a Py, standard Python module and it implements the dynamic library feature. It interacts with the QF test daemon. Uh, the daemon was already present in QF test, however, it was not sufficient to work with robot framework and it was necessary to add a special robot daemon to the QF test. In parameters, we provide the host where QF test runs, the port of the QF test, and the key store, and the primary test suite for our tests. So after the connection is established, the daemon parses the QF test test suite. Uh, it determines all procedures that are robot framework keywords and returns these keywords back to this Python module, uh, including parameter information and so on. So the daemon pi file here, we can uh, distinguish two main steps, the setup phase, which is setting up the Java VM, connecting uh, to the QFTS daemon and telling the daemon to parse all the keywords from, uh, from the QFTS test suite and return the keyword information. Um, and the execution phase, so after all keywords and keyword info from QF test test suite is received, then everything is done in the run keyword uh, method. The arguments from a keyword are transferred into a Java property subject, and after that, the keywords are called in QF test test suite. They get mapped to a corresponding QF test procedure, and after the result, of keyword code is reported, it can also uh, report exceptions, errors, and so on and so on. The interesting part is that QF test can maintain connection with the application under test, uh, which means that QF test stays running and the application stays up uh, when we are running many tests. And every robot framework run is comparable to a test suite run in QF test. Every keyword call gets into a procedure call, and in between we have the robot framework test cases that also get mapped for reporting into QF test test cases. Okay, so that's it about the daemon pie. Let's, now let's talk about the thread helper pie. So the communication uh, with the daemon is done with Java RMI. So we need to use Java in the Python module, and this is why I use JPipe. And the Python module initializes a Java VM and it uses it to communicate uh, to the QF test daemon via RMI. And when the tests are finished, it needs to shut down. So for a clean shutdown, all the respective threads in the Python module in its embedded Java VM need to be terminated. And so the thread helper is a necessary byproduct for cleaning up all the Java threads on shutdown. Without this, the robot framework threads the run to the end and everything is fine, but the process was hanging. So let's take a look at QF test. So I already have the QF test 6.0 version, so it should be available soon. And 
this is how the test suite looks like. And here are the keywords which we use and with the names that can be used also from the robot framework perspective. And this is a procedure. Mm, what is a procedure? Like this is a means to collect some of the basic building blocks of a test suite, like uh, events and checks it into a larger reusable structure. So procedures can be called from any other part of the test suite and even from a different uh, suite. And we can pass parameters to a procedure in the form a, of a variable definition. So for example, we have the procedure field text, which was modeled on, let's say, the browser library field text um, keyword. And you can see that, for example, here we have like a test steps. Uh, this steps, let's say, transfers uh, the smart ID um, from robot framework uh, to an ID that is understandable uh, to the further test steps uh, of QF test. And here as the input text uh, test steps. And if we expand here, we can also check whether the parameters are passed. And here are the variables. So for example, we pass the component ID and text, which is the selector and text. And here are these uh, variables passed. So we can use similar approach here in robot framework. So in a minute, I will show you how it looks like from the robot framework perspective, but you can pass the selector and text, and you can use both positional arguments and main arguments. When talking about QF test, it's also important to mention smart IDs. This is a new feature, and it's it can be described as a path to a component. It's kind of similar to XPaths, and smart IDs can be prepared based on, for example, classes, um, names, IDs, features, and extra features. Additionally, we can specify the index of a of component. And different component smart IDs can be used in hierarchies. So nesting subcomponents into components is also possible. Um, regular expressions can also be implemented into smart IDs. So here we have a few examples. So for example, this is based on a label or a feature and with an index. And we always um, use the hash prefix when we want to specify that uh, we want to use the smart IDs. And here, the list, so we have like um, the hash and the colon. So this is a class, and then we use the add sign. And after that, this is a subcomponent. So the invoice receiver is subcomponent to this list uh, class. And for example, the regex expression can also be seen here. So we want to specify a business partner. And after that, we uh, also want to accept multiple characters. And we specify that we want to use the regex expression with a person sign. Okay, so let's run a quick demo maybe. So I have already logged into the start application order to save time. And I wanted to show you, let's say two test cases uh, and also one pass uh, execution and one test a failed test execution so like the first test case is just a simple one so i navigate to a specific uh, component and subcomponent in star application then i push the scope this is an interesting uh, keyword which is also available in the robot tcqf test the suite um, and it limits down the search for um, q for uh, selectors in further keywords uh, to a specific uh, section, so a specific, let's say, mother selector. So in this case, this will, this will be a send, sender section. So I fill the text in one um, text field with a label called country code. The value is 80, and then I check whether uh, I, I get the text from an, another text field with label country, and then I check whether it's Austria. So let's check it out. So I run the keyword right now, and it resets the perspective and opens the create transport order, fills the country code, and voila, the country is Austria. So let's check how the execution looks like. So it's passed. And if we jump into the QFTest run log, so the QFTest report, we can also see the result here. So 
this is the test suite, so the robot framework um, file. And in the test case, we open create transport order, which is the same as in robot framework um, file. And here are the uh, keywords that were run. And basically, all and everything is passed. Worth mentioning is that the start application keyword, which was executed during test setup, First, check whether the application is running. So if it's connected, if the client is connected, and if it's not, then it launches the application. And if it's connected, so if the application is running, then it just skips the whole uh, starting the application procedure. Okay, so let's make things more interesting right now. Um, so. Now I would like to run two test cases, two simple test cases, but one will fail and the other one will pass. So we will repeat the first one, uh, but I would like to example uh, change a selector so it's not found and it will be also um, seen and uh, you'll find also an error in the QF test run. And the second, one will pass because it won't. It will only navigate to a different, let's say, um, star application under test component. So let's run it again. So the application is still running. So right now the this is also a test setup of closing all tabs and the country code is entered, but this won't be found and it's running the close all tabs again because a new test starts and it's selected the search transport order. So let's look at the run log. You will see that right now this, there is a red frame, uh, which means that a uh, test case is failed and the open create transport order is failed. And we can go further and that the git text is failed because of component not found in scope. Target component country R could not be determined in the explicit scope. So this is our planned result. And the second one is passed because everything is okay. There's no red frame here. And in the robot framework project, we can also see that the message, uh, the error message was transferred also here to the console. So the target component could not be determined in the explicit uh, scope. And all the results from QF tests were also passed down to the robot framework reports. So we can see, for example, the log file. So you can see all the test execution and the error message, which was visible in QF test and in the console. Thank you for your time. I hope you liked the talk. Uh, if you have some questions, feel free to ask them during the Q&A session. And also, hopefully, see you next year. Hello, Christoph and Gregor. Can you hear us? Hear us? Uh, Hi. Yes. Perfect. Excellent. Yes. Thank you for the talk. We have a few questions for you. So, first one, why did you not use Swing Library? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, Swing Library won't work with the SWT application. I, I think that... We'll, we'll different different UI. This. Yeah, this completely yeah, exactly. different technology. That's clear. Uh, next question. Did you try RPA Java Access Library for testing the Java application? And did you use Google's Access Bridge Explorer tool for investigating the Java application? Uh, I, I don't think so, but uh, I may have already, I, I may have mentioned it in the code that we were despite the fact that we are looking for other tools, we still wanted to use something with robot framework. Because uh, this is a standard in Schenker, and by, and by the way, Schenker is member of the uh, of the foundation of the Robot Framework Foundation. So that's, that's why we focus on <laughs> that's why we focused on it. Uh, will that library be part of QF test releases? Yes, 
we released QF test 6.0 uh, on Tuesday. <laughs> was uh, the Robocom was one of the reasons why we had to hurry with that release and we, we got it out just in time. Nice. And the robot framework integration is fully supported. Now it's a preview, preview feature yet because the smart IDs are preview, but um, at this stage it's, it's fully functional and now we're waiting for feedback from QF test customers who also want to use uh, robot framework and it's going to evolve from there. Uh, does this work well for Windows uh, GUI image elements application? Mm, that's a good question. Depends, depends on what you mean by, by image elements. If it's image-based testing only, then I wouldn't use QF test. Then I'd go for SQLy or a tool that uh, focused on that. If it's a um, general Windows application, QF test uses um, Windows accessibility and um, that works reasonably well, yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Christoph and Gregor. People will probably ask more questions in, in the speaker corner. Thank you for the presentation and the Q&A. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye.